हेलो एवरीबॉडी माय नेम इज हारू वेलकम टू दिस वीडियो ऑन प्रायोरिटी सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग एल्गोरिथम तो ये हम टिप सो प्रायोरिटी बेस सीपीयू शेड्यूलिंग इज एन ऑपरेटिंग सिस्टम्स एल्गोरिथम इन व्हिच वी शेड्यूल अ सेट ऑफ प्रोसेस एंड ईच प्रोसेस विल बी हैविंग अ बर्स्ट टाइम अरेवल टाइम एंड अ न्यू एंटिटी व्हिच इज कॉल्ड अ प्रायोरिटी हियर वी विल बी प्रायोरिटाइजिंग द प्रोसेसेस व्हिच विल बी एग्जीक्यूटिंग विद रिगार्ड्स टू इट्स प्रायोरिटी नाउ प्रायोरिटी कैन ऑब्वियसली बी हाउएवर यू वांट इट हियर वी आर सेटिंग द प्रायोरिटी वैल्यूज एज 1 2 3 4 5 1 बीइंग द हाईएस्ट प्रायोरिटी इफ यू वांट यू कैन सेट 5 एज द हाईएस्ट प्रायोरिटी एज़ वेल बट दिस इज व्हाट वी आर गोइंग टू बी फॉलोइंग हियर ओके सो सिंपली सेइंग प्रायोरिटी बेस्ड शेड्यूलिंग एट एनी पॉइंट प्रीएम्प्टिव वर्शन एट एनी पॉइंट find the pro, uh, uh, process with the highest priority and execute it if there is a process with a higher priority which comes in the next second interrupt the previous process and service this current process that is the only thing you need to know so let us work with an example to see how this algorithm works i have actually changed these priorities values uh, right here so that we can work on the example a bit better okay so at t is equal to 0 what are the processes that are available P4, correct? Now P4 will have a priority value, but since there is no other process available, P4 will automatically be the process with the highest priority. Which means at second zero, we can go ahead and say P4 will be the one which executed because there is no other process. But when we look at T is equal to one, we see priority uh, process P3 is also arriving. See now P3 and P1, P4 are the available process. Now there are two processes, more than one, which means we have to check for the priority values. P4's priority value is one. P3's priority value is four, which means P4 has a higher priority than P3. So P4 will be the one that will be executing. Okay. So now at t is equal to two, what are the process that is being arrived? See, look, P4 is already arrived at t is equal to zero, right? And t is equal to one. We see P3 is arriving now. At t is equal to two, we can see P1 is also arriving. So now we have three available processes, which means let us check on the first. priority value of each priority of p4 is 1 priority of p3 is 4 uh, and priority of p1 is 5 which means p4 is the process with the highest priority here so again p4 will be executed until t is equal to 2 to t is equal to 3 now once this is done we see p4 three bus cycles are already done first time is also 3 so p4 is now completely service so we can remove this from the process list completely okay so p4 is serviced now at t is equal to 3 we can say no process arriving so now we have two processes p3 and p1 p3 is uh, priority value is 4 p1's priority value is 5 which means now 4 is the process with the highest priority that is p3 so we can go ahead and execute p3 from the second of 3 to 4 now t is equal to 4 you can see process p5 arrives correct so p5 has a priority value of 3 which means the process with the highest priority now is p5 so p5 will be the one that is executing from 4 to 5 okay now t is equal to 5 we can see the final process arrives which is p2 correct now p2 has a priority value of 2 which means p2 is now the highest uh, priority process so p2 will be executed now okay so at t is equal to 6 again these are the set of the available process because everything has arrived now p2 still has the highest priority which means we can again go ahead and service p2 once that is done p2's burst time is also zero we can remove this from the process list now in the remaining three processes the next process is the one which is p5 which has the priority value of 3 okay so which means p5 will be the one that is next executed p5 from uh, uh, c 6 to 7 so 7 So eight P five will be executed. Already P five has been executed once, not two. So two burst cycles P five is being executed, which means the next at T is equal to eight. Again P five will be the process with the highest priority because no other process is coming in. So we can uh, definitely say P five will be executed till it is completely serviced. Okay, because there is no other process is going to come with a higher priority. So P five is also now done. Which means remaining process are P3 and P1. Again, I said once now since there are no other process, whatever process is going to be that that is only going to be executed until its completion. So next P3 will be executed, correct? Until its end. See, already P3 has been executed once. Total burst time is eight, which means remaining burst time is seven. Okay. Now finally we have P1. Once this is also gone, P1's burst time is six, and P1 hasn't been executed yet. So remaining time 
P1 will be there. Okay. So, this is how this algorithm works. Actually, if you do P3 here, 7 times you have 2, but we have only done once for simplicity. You guys understand what is going on here. It is not being interrupted, so it is not needed. Okay. So, now let us go ahead and calculate the completion time, the turnaround time and the waiting time for all the processes here. P1, P2, P3, P4, P5. Now, the process is very simple to do this. Let us just pick one process you guys do for the rest. Okay. So, let us say for example, P4. Now, P4 is an easy process. Let us say P2. Okay. So, P2, the completion time is 7. Okay. The turnaround time is the completion time minus the arrival time, which means the arrival time of P2 is 5. So, the turnaround time is 2, 7 minus 5. And the waiting time is what? The waiting time is the burst time minus the turnaround time. So, the turnaround time minus the burst time is what I meant. So, the waiting time here is 0, 2 minus 2. Okay. So, now this is the values for P2, the completion time, turnaround time and waiting time. Remaining of the table, I think you guys can go ahead and fill out and uh, we can now can move on to the code. Right. So, now we have Visual Studio code open. Uh, we have a file called priority preemptive and we are going to be looking at that particular algorithm. So, now uh, in this algorithm, see one thing to note mainly. This is the preemptive algorithm. So, we are going to be obviously in every of the CPU scheduling algorithm, we are taking something called a process list. A process list is nothing but this particular table right here. Okay. So, how do we make this? See, this table is being basically a nested list and each of this uh, uh, row is one element value. Okay. Uh, in that nested list. Now, to maximize the how simple the code should be, that is how easy the code should be, there is something that we need to keep in mind. Okay. The process, the uh, value, this list which contains the process, priority of the process should be always the first element, which means, see, every process is going to have a unique priority. Now, since uh, the priority is the first element of this nested list, in order to find which has the highest priority, we can go ahead and simply do sort, right? We do not have to go ahead and call sort with respect to this index. If that is the first index, Python by itself, uh, nested list means it will sort with the first index only. So, if priority is the first index, we can go ahead and say, yeah, we can just do it this way. Okay. So, that is what we are basically go doing here. And once we have priority value, we can go ahead and have the rest. Okay. So, next, the rest values do not really matter. We have PID, burst time, arrival time. Uh, so, we can go ahead and say burst time and arrival time. Okay. So, this is how a single process is going to be represented. A process list will have a list of these processes. Okay. So, first of all, let us go and... Uh, define what this process list is going to be like yeah i can go ahead and say a process list yeah declare that so let's do for p1 here so p1's priority is 5 so priority value 5 p1 first time 6 arrival time 6. so it'll be 5 p1 6 2 okay so we can go say 5 p1 correct 6 and then followed by 2. So that is the value for p1 i'm going to go ahead and do the rest of the table then we'll meet right now we have filled the process list. If you guys can go ahead, you can check it. So we have priorities 52413, 52413. The rest values you can go check if you want to. Now, okay. So once this process list is so this, how we are going to be defining this process list. Let us go ahead and define the priority CPU shedding algorithm and let us take the process list as the input. Okay. So first of all, for this process to work, we need a few things. Number one, we need to keep track of the time, right? The try we have t is equal to 0, t is equal to 1. So, we have to keep track of the time. So, initially time will be 0. Then we have to ke keep track of the GAN chart. And this GAN chart basically we are going to have it as a list. Each element of the list will be the PID for that particular second. Okay. So, totally we have every second. Then we need to have a completed dictionary. This dictionary is a ta this table. Okay. So, the key value of this dictionary will be the process ID and the value will be a list which contains the the completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time. Okay. So, once we know all this, we have all this. Let us loop till this process list is empty. See, basically what is the idea here? Once a process is completed, we are removing from this list as if you guys can go ahead and rewind and see. So, if every process is service, that means the list will be empty. Once the list is empty, then our algorithm is completed. We can go ahead and print all the values that we need. Okay. So, which means the process will be the loop will be uh, looped basically till all processes are completed which means until the process is empty we are going to be looping this algorithm okay so what are we doing see number one at every stage what did we do we found the available process and then we saw which process has the highest priority which means you have to go ahead and find the available processes 
so this is, can be done we can simply go ahead uh, see first of all finding the available processes okay so we can go ahead and loop for p in this process list we can go ahead if see arrival time is given by what p of 2 correct p of 2 if arrival time is less than or equal to the current time we can go ahead and add this process to the available list okay this list will be changing every time because in every second the available will change that is why we are putting inside the loop okay so once that is done look there is a boundary case if there is no process available what do you do okay so if there is no process available means the available list will be empty correct nothing will be appended to it so we can go ahead and say that the cpu is idle so we can go ahead and say gansha dot append that this cpu is idle and then we can go ahead and continue correct and now obviously we have to increase the time by one because in that particular second the cpu is idle okay okay if the available was empty what do we do else if the available is not empty i'm sorry the e key of my keyboard is not working yeah so else what do we do else okay see the idea is very simple number one we go ahead and find which process has the highest priority so we can do this simply by sorting this available correct now once we sort it again first element it will be the priority we will sort through priority again one will be greater than two three four five that's how the priority works which means once we sort it the available of zero will be the process with the highest priority yes two or not and obviously if you guys are taking the process five as the highest priority five four three two one you can go ahead and put reverse equal to two okay now the process that is we're going to be serving here will be obviously available of zero correct so available of zero is what we're going to be servicing for this particular second alone okay so for that particular second let us service the process okay uh, how do we do that okay so few things to keep in mind uh, first of all this process should be uh, added to the gantt chart so gantt chart we can go ahead and append of this process correct okay that is done what else do we do we update the time by one so time plus is equal to one okay that is also done what else to be done see the process uh, is being used that means we have to reduce the burst time by one because see in this case uh, p3 we are executing means p3's burst time total will be reduced by one correct so this process burst time will be decreased by one so burst time is given by what you have uh, p of 0 1 2 3 correct so 2 will be the burst time, okay so you, if you guys have been following this a bit, you guys can understand one thing that see we are only taking this process value from the available and we are only changing that which means in the main process list, this list, we are not updating the process value. So we don't know when this process is going to complete because only if we know in this particular value, we can remove it from the list and every time this uh, available list is changing, so making this change here makes no sense. This change should be made to the main process list. How do we do that? Simple. Go ahead from the main process list just remove uh one second guys my e key is stuck yeah let's just go ahead and remove our what our current process okay once that is okay our current process is removed why we are going to be re-adding the same process again just by updating its burst time so we can go ahead and uh, add this again to the process list once we update the burst time see here we are what we are doing is we are updating the burst time updating the burst time okay that once that is done we are re-adding this back to the process list but there's one condition here what if once we subtract this burst time the remaining burst time is zero then if we add this back to the process list that means there'll be an infinite loop because why because see once a process the remaining burst time becomes zero it has to be removed from the loop and that is why we are looping till this is empty okay so that means if checking the boundary condition if process is completed completely serviced so what do we do if process of 2 again the burst time is now equal to 0 which means process is completed okay so that means we can go ahead and add an entry to the completed dictionary so pid is given by what process of 1 correct burst time okay burst time will be a problem here because if the burst time is 0 we cannot make the correct calculations with the main uh, 
uh, this thing, uh, the completion time, turnaround time and the waiting time. Waiting time depends on the burst time, but we, since we are dynamically updating the burst time here, there will be, we cannot do anything. Let's just go ahead and say what happens now. I will go ahead and put completed of PID is equal to current time to see what is the completion time alone. Okay. Then we will talk about the waiting time, everything else. So, we can put continue here. See, or else we generate this. We add this back. Once this is completed, I think we can go ahead and print the Gantt chart and print our uh, completed dictionary. Okay. So, if we go ahead, let's just call this function here, priority of process list, correct? If we call this function T, you can see. Okay. So, one thing here, we are adding the PID alone. We are adding the entire process here. So, let's just say process of uh, one is the pre-ID. Okay. So, once that is done, let us go ahead. Okay, so idle, idle, P2, P4, 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 P2. Okay, so there's something being wrong here. We are making a very small error. That is arrival time is P of 3, okay, not P of 2. P of 2 is the burst time, okay. So once this is done, I think we can go ahead and run this process. Okay, so we have P4, 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 P3, P5, P2, okay. P4, 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 P3, P5, P2. So the GAN chart is true. And the completion time is also the same, see. P2 is completion time, for example, we want process, yeah, completion time is 7, here also it's 7, okay. But now we need the CT, TT and the WT, how do you say that? See, again, I've already discussed that the burst time here is dynamic, so we cannot use that for the calculations. So, how do we come about this algorithm is, see, because at this particular time, the burst time is 0. So, anything minus 0 is 0 only, the actual burst time we don't know. For that, what we'll do is, before this itself, let us create a dictionary called burst time and just note down the initial burst time of all the process okay for p in process list let us iterate through all the elements in the process list and create an entry in the burst time see pid is what process of one correct process of one and the pid will just take a value okay and the burst time value will be p of okay so that will be the see let me just go ahead and print what this burst time list is uh, this dictionary is basically so you guys understand see this keeps track of all the burst times of the process p uh, the key will be the pid the burst time will be the value okay see for example p5 burst time is 4 again p5 burst time is 4 so we have the original burst time here so we don't need to worry about this process and this we can go ahead and uh, note on the burst time okay see first of all what is the arrival time arrival time is process of 2 correct so, burst time is what? Burst time is burst time of, okay, burst times, let's say burst times so that it's better. Burst time, okay. So, burst times of that particular PID, okay. Once that is also done, let us calculate the CT. CT is current time, correct. What is TT? TT is current time minus arrival time, correct. What is WT? WT is the TT minus the burst time, okay. See. I will write two statements here so that it is better to understand. Yeah. So, if you go ahead right now and uh, clear this and put here. Yeah. Uh, sorry, we have to create the entry here. So, completed of PID will now simply be the CT, TT and WT. Okay. Yeah. Again, sorry guys, we made the same mistake again. See, arrival time is process of 3, but we have put process of 2 here. Okay. That is the simple problem we have done. I think we can go ahead and run this now to see the how the algorithm works. See. Now, the Gantt chart is same as before, okay. But P2 here will be 720. If you go ahead and compare here, again it's 720, which means this table with the completed time, turnaround time, waiting time is also the same. So, this is basically how this algorithm works. We take, uh, we find out the available process, we sort it, we take that process, we minus the burst time by 1. In case the, uh, it's completed, we remove it, add the, all the entries of CTTTWT or we re-add this back into the uh, process list okay and again if the whole burst time why creating this wasn't uh, clear with you let me just go ahead and uh, see burst time is what process of 2 okay so instead of tt if i put process of 2 let's see what happens okay let me just go and uh, run this see the p2 is 722 because the value of process 2 here will be 0 that is when we are see process 2 is 0 we are coming back here but the actual burst time is what 2 okay for p2 so that is why I am going ahead and creating because see since we are dynamically updating the burst time, we are subtracting this by 1, we cannot use this particular value to calculate the uh, waiting time. That is why we are creating a copy and using that to do this. Okay. So this by itself is the priority preemptive scheduling algorithm. I hope this was uh, you could understand what I am saying here. The complete code will be down uh, 
the github link will be down the code will be in the github obviously as always so i hope this you can understand this my suggestion is to watch this video understand this concept and code by itself very straightforward algorithm only uh, if this video helped you give this a like button if you guys want more of this series the playlist link will be down below you guys can go ahead and watch the other videos thank you so much for watching this video i'll see you in the next video until then bye